Welcome to Power Your Profits podcast, your friendly guide in bringing your business revenue to the next level. Listen as host Susie Carter hears inspiring stories of success from her fellow entrepreneurs and transformational leaders. Prepare to make significant change to your strategies as they unravel the secrets of building multi-million dollar businesses and the most effective tips on finance, marketing, and sales accountability. If you want to make your first step towards explosive business growth, this is the right podcast for you. Without further ado, here is your host, Susie. My next guest, Linda Claire Plug, is an international recognized relationship and marketing expert who helps solopreneurs and solo business owners use email to develop loyal, engaged subscribers and turn fans into clients and customers. She's the author of the free six-figure newsletter, Linda's popular ready-to-go articles, take the time and effort out of nurturing and keeping you in touch with those valuables subscribers. Linda loves to travel the world with her business and her co she's a co-founder of adventurouslife.io, which brings groups of professionals and entrepreneurs ages 40 plus to an international destination to live, work, and travel in the world. She's also an award-winning journalist and writer for the past 30 years, and her articles have appeared in newspapers, magazines, newsletters, all over the world. When she's not traveling, she lives in gorgeous Northern California with her lovely dog, Lulu. Her specialties is coaching to develop profitable, portable businesses, done for you newsletter services and content solutions, communication strategist, and a coaching, consulting, writing, and training. Please welcome my guest, Linda Claire Pug. I'm here with my good friend, Linda Pug. Linda, thank you for being here. I'm so excited because you are a relationship marketing expert, which is different, right? And you have a new book called Build Your Online Following that liberates you for life's adventures, which I love adventures, right? That's why we work so hard. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really super fun to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. So tell everybody, who do you serve and what is your superpower? What's your magic? What's your secret sauce? (laughs) Give us that. That's such a great way to ask that question. So the people that I serve are primarily interested themselves in helping others to transform, whether it's transform their business, transform their life, transform their relationship, their parenting, any, any of the above. And they're looking for assistance in getting the word out about themselves and in the best ways possible. So I help them with that process. So Um, how do you help business owners? Because you talk about the importance of freedom to a business owner. So how how does that work? Look, we're all like, now we're all like this. Okay, Linda, please tell us. Well, and you you asked about the special sauce and that's where that comes in. Um, I think that my special sauce has always been the concept of freedom, like demonstrating and living the concept of freedom. I've been traveling with my business since 2007 was, I think, the first time I took my business on the road. And that was back in the day when, you know, Wi-Fi wasn't so prevalent and you had to, you had, I, I had to lean over the window over the canal in Venice with my laptop in my hands just to try to get a signal. Uh, it's much, much easier now. And so um, I, that's something that I love to do. And I spend a lot of time every year doing it, except for pandemic years. Who knew? Right. <laughs> well, now in pandemic years, everyone's going, okay, no more office. Now I'm going to be the virtu- virtual nomad, which is awesome. Yeah. Yes. We have a lot awesome. just to share. And what does that look like? You know, yeah. I have been in this business for 30 years, finally getting it. Like, Wait, I don't have to be stuck here. I can go anywhere. So funny. (laughs) I love that. I do. So let's talk about running your business from anywhere because there is, there is challenges with that. There is like, what would you say are the five most important things when I'm looking at picking a location, picking a site, you know, to make sure that I can still do my day to day business, you know, and not have to stick my computer out over the canal. <laughs> over the canal. I think that was God's way of going, not today, my sister. No. Today. <laughs> you know, that is the first thing that I look for is some place that um, I know I can do my work because that's important. You can't you can't have this freedom life if you're not making the money to to support it. So what what do you need to do your work? And most people are, are surprised that really most likely all you're going to need is a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection that's really strong. 
So if you're going to be staying in an apartment that you're uncertain about whether that signal is going to be strong or not, you can always go to a co-working space. Those have proliferated over the last five years or so enormously. And they're super fun to go to and work, work at because there are other nomads doing the same exact thing from all over the world. Really great community to get to know. So that's the first thing that I do. The second thing is when I'm looking for my housing, it's it's tricky. You know, these days we have Airbnb, we have VRBO, all kinds of different apartment finding services and whatnot. But you need to know where that apartment is and make sure that it's in, you know, a reasonable space. So there's a lot of due diligence that you need to do to 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 find just the right just the right spot and it's easy to do but it does take time so i just want to encourage everyone make that part of your plan to look for you know what is that what is the neighborhood like what are the reviews like what is the the 360 look like um you know what can you tell about that location uh, i have had a variety of experiences i love to go into residential areas and just pretend I'm a local. My It's my biggest thrill of all is for somebody to think I'm a local. So if they ask me a question in their language, expecting me to answer back in that language, I'm like, yes, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Okay, so that was, oh, number one was, you know, what do you need? Number two is your housing, anything else? Yeah. Yeah, I think that you you kind of want to know yourself and it might take a few trips to explore, but are you the type of person that is fine traveling on your own? Um, you know, some people are and some people even prefer it. I used to prefer it. There are still times when I do love to be on my own, but I got to a point where I realized one day that I was like done with with solo travel. And I, I said to myself at the time, I'm not doing any more travel unless it's with uh, friends or, you know, colleagues or whatever. I, that wasn't true. I have continued to do some, but for the most part now I travel um, with other people who are like-minded. Um, one of the things I did a couple of years ago was to start a little business with a colleague of mine where we take groups of people. It was like the missing link because I was teaching how people how to take their business on the road and how to make sure you're secure and a coffee shop, all the, the, the things, but not you know, going with other people and having that experience with other people. So this was the missing link. We just take people to cool places around the world and we stay for a month at a time. So that's and, your adventurous uh, life.io. Right? That's our adventurous life. Yeah. And, and share what, what is that about? Like share with us. Cause that's fascinating, right? This is a hub of all of us who want to do this. I'm, like, I'm not, uh, I don't, my girlfriends, I just got back from Costa Rica. They moved there. They mm, built an cool. apartment building there. They're building a retreat center there. They're two single women from Canada. I'm like, nice. you guys are so brave. Like, this is great. <laughs> They're like, really? I'm like, really? Like, they they broke ground. They, like, from bottom, you know, from buying the property to building this apartment building. You know, well, sort of you know, everybody has there. different levels of courage or yeah. different areas that they're courageous in. I don't think I would do that either. And people call me courageous all the time, but I wouldn't do what they're doing. So we all have our, our set points. Yeah. So what, we, what I found when I was teaching people how to take your business abroad, that people still weren't doing it. And so that's what Adventurous Life is. We actually go with the groups and they, a lot of times it's people working abroad, running their business from abroad for the very first time. So, you know, it's actually really easy, but it doesn't seem like that at the beginning. And no, it makes like, me nervous right now just talking about, but excited at the same time. <laughs> like, who knew? Like, we, we had a woman with us who, who she's been on several trips now and she has only government contracts. And she was like, how am I going to talk with my generals or whoever it is, you know, that she works with from a, a co-working space in Portugal? But she figured it out and it was not difficult at all. So now she knows that she can travel anywhere and, and run her business, but she doesn't want to go by herself. And so she right. found a tribe of people who want to travel also, also don't want to travel by themselves, also have businesses that they need to attend to. You know, the thing is that we want to travel for um, longer periods of time. I don't yeah. know if you've ever heard the phrase slow travel. It's like slow food and this and that. Well, slow travel is, 
is going somewhere and sticking around for a while and really right. getting to know it. And so that's what we do is, is slow travel because otherwise, I don't know, it's just like uh, you can go on vacation and, and, and go here and there and spend one night here and three nights there. But that's different than the experience of living someplace, working there, walking to work like everybody else does. You know, it's just a different experience. And what ends up happening is that the first week, everybody's like, oh, my God, we're here, we're here. And they act like tourists. And yeah. then the second week is like, oh, we can do a few other things that we didn't think we were going to be able to do. And so then they do that. And then after the second week, and they've still got two more weeks to go, they're like, oh, this is the experience. Yeah. You know, that's when you really got to drop in and feel like, oh, I live here. Right, it's a whole paradigm. I live in Barcelona. You know? Yeah, and experience the culture. I mean, that's what I love about traveling. I, you know, I prefer learning about geography that way, right? And it's to, yeah, you know. When I got on an airplane, where am I going? Right, even uh -huh. just going to Costa Rica, you know, we pulled up the map. I'm like, oh, okay, there's Nicaragua. We're like, oh, oh, okay, we just flew all through Mexico. Uh -huh. You know, so you just you take it on differently because you're there, you're experiencing it, you're, yep. so what should we watch out for? So if we don't use a service like yours, which, you know, I want to encourage everyone, just go look at it, right? The adventure life. Oh. .io, right. We've got a free insider's guide that you can download for free, but to go, Ooh, what do we need to watch out for? You know, being naive and not knowing, right. And I think sometimes as Americans, we get really comfortable and thinking everyone's got our back. <laughs> That's not always the way right. it is. That's a really good uh, point and question. The, the best thing that I know to do and that I recommend is to uh, walk briskly like you know where you're going. Even if you don't know where you're going, you want to duck into a little you know store or something like that. If you need to look at your map or open a map, who does that these days? I mean, don't um, do it on the front. <laughs> don't be like this. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Don't look like you don't know what you're doing and just... Uh, if you if you can dress like the people dress there, you know, dress up maybe for yourself or dress down a little bit just to so that you you look like you belong. And the more you look like you belong, the less likely you are to be a target. And and watch some videos. We were in Prague uh, last in 2019, and I had watched some videos of these these guys from Prague who were showing all the different ways that um, scammers were targeting tourists at ATM points, ATM stations. And lo and behold, it started happening to, to us. It, my wow. friend was the one getting cash out. And all of a sudden this guy comes up and he's like, here, I can, it, it started doing the whole thing. And it took me about two seconds to, to flick and remember, oh, that's what's happening. And so I grabbed her and I said, let's get out of here. But, you know, stuff happens. So you yeah. do need to do a little bit of research in advance. And by the way, I'm not saying that to scare anyone away. It's no, not. Yeah. It's reality, you right? Just it's just walking in the street wherever That's you're. all. You just take care. Right. You know, you wear your purse this way um, across across your shoulder with the purse facing in, not, pay, not facing out to the street. You know, you learn these things and they become second nature and they become not at all... Um, something you have to consciously think about. It just becomes part of who you are and what you do. Right. I love that you talk about, you know, it, it is an adventure, even just finding the great place to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that when I first started traveling internationally, it wasn't about necessarily going and sitting somewhere. It was figuring out the transit, figuring out the money, figuring out where to eat, figuring out, you know, how to get somewhere. I had to learn that that's part of the adventure where I get so stressed out. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. It's like, no, breathe. This is the process. <laughs> it's so true. And as much as you can, I, I really encourage everyone to like get out of the main tourist areas because the experiences that you'll have in those locations will just, they'll be the, the most memorable ones that you bring back. I remember um, in, in Rome going with my business partner, Pam Ivey, and we just decided we wanted to go find a, a really well-regarded restaurant, but that no tourists knew about. So we did a little bit of research and it took like maybe 25, 30 minutes and a variety of trains and, and whatnot to get to. But once we were there, it was magical and the food was amazing. And it was like, we were the only tourists there. And that makes me feel really good about having an authentic experience, you know. But they didn't know you were a tourist. That's the key. <laughs> They knew. They knew. <laughs> as much as I tried, they still knew. But 
at least. Now, do you uh, speak multiple languages as well? I speak Spanish pretty well, and I speak Italian um, well enough to get by, um, but not have a wonderful conversation. When I'm, I l- actually lived in Italy for about six months, and at that point, I spoke really pretty, pretty good at the end of that period of time, but it's fallen away. So I'd have to do a little boning up before I went back. And do you use Google Translate? Because when we're in Costa Rica, I'm, I'm Google translating everything, right? Because yeah. <laughs> my Spanish is definitely Spanglish. So I, I'm trying to respect <laughs> the culture. And they love when we try, right? Yes. Any culture loves when you try yes. you know, to communicate and speak to them. Yes. So do you have any technology hacks that we should be using while we're on the road? Um, you know, just have your one translator. I have several translator apps on my phone and I, I gravitate toward one in particular. I don't even remember the name of it, but it's just a common one. Um, and um, and the other one that's really fun and not necessarily always accurate is the image translator. Um, oh. Or you can, you, you can um, like, uh, I went to see the Northern Lights in Norway in this tiny little town of about 50 people way out on the far coast of the Lofoten Islands. And there was no one there that spoke any English. So we used this little image translator to see, is this milk or is this, yeah, you right. know. It, and what so <laughs> part of the time it was accurate and part of the time it wasn't, but it, that, that's kind of fun to do. So in the, you know, so many people are struggling right now with the pandemic and, you know, with the economy, what's been your secret sauce to stay in action and grow? Cause you know, your business model completely shifted. So what has been your secret sauce to stay in action and keep growing? Well, for me, the beauty of it was that I, you know, I started that travel related business because I had a business that I would already bring with me on the road. And so that one is what I've been focused on. So thankfully I had something to fall back on. So I've just ramped up my, my focus. Um, I wrote the book free that was that's the actual name of it oh, i love it <laughs> the the subtitle is what is what you said um and it's what everybody thinks is the title but no the title is actually free um and so i wrote the book i i did a couple of launches i just i just ramped it up because that's needed to be full income versus you know partial income so yeah that's that's what i did um so i luckily already had things fairly well in place. I did yeah. stretch myself with a few launches and created new marketing material and stuff. But, um, and I think honestly that for, for most people, you know, obviously exceptions, but most people can do most business online. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it was a huge discovery, which I'm so happy that they made, right? It's right. just exciting that they, that they, um, that now realize that they can do virtually all, if not all of their business online. It's really uh, a, a revelation, I think, for a lot of people. So some people discovered it. Some people just used it more. Other people changed altogether what they were doing. So um, for me, it was just sort of more of the same and, yeah. and wrapped up. I love that. Okay, so I know like as a business person, I learned when I'm growing, I learned when I'm having success, but my biggest juiciest lessons have been when I've had a breakdown, some people call it a failure, a challenge. So in your life, just one, <laughs> you only get to pick uh-huh. one. Only just one? Okay. And then I are seasoned. We're spicy, <laughs> but we're seasoned, right? So what would you say your biggest failure, biggest breakdown has been? And then what did you learn from it? Like after you got through crying, <laughs> what was the, what was the thing that you're like, oh, that is why that lesson was brought to me? Yes, yeah, so I definitely have had a multiple of those, but the one that sticks out that comes right to mind is when I was living in Italy during that period of time, I did my first big launch with um, affiliate partners supporting it. And, and it was my first, it was kind of like stepping out and saying, ta-da, I'm here. Um, and it freaked me out. It was, there was so many things about it that I loved, but there was so much that was new that I'd never done before. And, and the the big webinar that I was going to be holding to uh, make the offer from was the first time I'd done something like that. And it was 10 o'clock at night because I was in Italy. And, you know, I, I, um, I was 
coming up with the content in a really lovely medieval town. Like everything about it was very princess and magical. And 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 then it came time to about to give it. And I and I remember Skyping with my friend and saying, uh, this was the the night before and saying, I don't think I can do this. I just I can't do this. Right. And I was I was just like almost suffocating. I felt like I could not do this. It was so scary. Um, and she talked me off the ledge and I did it and it was a great success and I had fun and I learned a whole lot of stuff. And so I think for me, the biggest lesson was uh, and, and continues to be, you know, if you ever reach that point where you think, I just can't do this. This is not for me. I can't. There's no way. It's just like keep pushing through because what waits on the other side is is really amazing. First of all, you grow. Second of all, your business grows. You, you know, like it's just a really beautiful thing that happens when you go through that horror. <laughs> exactly. I think it's so important that we talk about it because a lot of people just speak from their mountaintop and, oh, and you know, I've grown. And But when you go, oh, that fear is constricting and that if you don't have your tribe, you don't have, have those ride or dies, like that girlfriend was ride or die, like, Girl, you forgot who you were, right? Because we yeah. do. We forget yeah. you're courageous. You forget that you, like, this is just what you do. But when yeah. you're on that precipice of the unknown, it's like, I don't want to. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I feel for everyone who goes through that, but we got to go through it. You, you do, right? And that's like you said, the reward is on the other side. Yeah. So if you could be remembered for one thing, Linda, what would you want to be remembered for? Being an amazing mother. Hmm. And how many kids? I have one son. And so what are the attributes that you, when you say that, because, you know, a lot of people say, but what does that mean for you? Because the definition is different for all of us. Yeah. Um, I think what I did that I really like, that I feel good about is, uh, first of all, I, I raised him myself most of the time. I was a single mom until he was nine. And then I was his only parent after his father died. And so I, I, um, I believe that I attended to his developmental needs in very, you know, rich and rewarding ways. Uh, the school that he went to just addressed his creative self. My son is like super, super Mr. Creative, plays instruments, paints, draws. He's a professional photographer. He sings, he acts, he's just like everything. And, and I, I knew to nurture that, um, that's all. I didn't give it to him, but I just knew to nurture it. And I kept the lines of communication open with him. That was kind of like my, my priority as he got to be a teenager was, was um, just keep those lines of communication open. Well, I think that's powerful. I remember when my kids you know, left the nest, so to speak, and then they kept wanting to do stuff with me. And I'm like, like, you really want to hang out with me? Like, I, I left when I was 17, never looked back, right? Hang out with you your know. parents. I just thought that was yeah. weird. Why do you want to hang out with your parents? And so I'd be right. like, at first I'm like, they just want me to pay. And then now, you know, they're 35 and 32, and we hang out all the time, and we're great yeah. friends. And I think that kind of builds on what you do for work, right? That liberate you and for the adventures of life, which is the adventures of being a mom. Yeah. And I think that's important so that you can see what you do in your work is what you did for your son, which is let me just develop this thing that you're passionate about versus trying to put up in a box of. Well, oh, that's really beautiful. Time. Thank you for making that connection. Um, yeah, it's what beautiful to hear, right? And I love to see adult children honoring their relationships with their parents. And you do have to cross over to this different relationship. You're no longer the parent yeah. like you were when they were a kid, protector, provider, especially as a single mom, I was a single mom for years and to go, now I have to, I have to let you have your own failures. I have to, have to let you have your own successes. And I just right. got to watch and go, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is let him discover this is adulthood, right? <laughs> I happen to be at his house right now. So. I love that. That's beautiful. Right. And, and healthy. I think, you know, when you don't grow up in whatever, you know, our idealistic lifestyle was of what parents were is to go, we get to reinvent it. You get to reinvent your life. You get to reinvent your career. You get to reinvent your relationship with your children and then children of adults, right? My parents of adult children to go, how do we create an adventurous life together? That's very yeah. exciting. I love that. You're right. Adventurous life is not just about travel. Adventurous life is 
adventurous life. Um, right, like don't put that in a box to go, this yeah. is my life, right? And yeah. we only have one to go, I don't want to follow the rules. I've never been a rule follower, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to make my own rules and then figure out how do I bring my community to play inside that sandbox with me, right? Because right. it's not fun being successful alone. I realized that I was traveling in Italy and I was on a couchette. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I want to travel with my girlfriends and I'm having this whole like I'm journal writing having this whole epiphany and then I'm like I need to find girlfriends with money that could travel with me yes. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. it was just this whole realization of like oh there's this whole world that's waiting like you said it's not just a vacation it's the world is waiting and now we're such a global economy yeah and with the help of you and this you know adventurous life site to go let me let me pave the way to show, don't do this, do this, right? That's what I love being a business coach is like, no, no, no. Let me shave 10 years off your learning curve because it's going to be hard. So let me help you. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. And travel can be stressful or it can be fun. And when you have a guide or a group of people, you know, that have been there, you know, to you know, not just been to that, that country, but just been there and know that, oh, this is part of the fun. What do you mean figuring out the train is part of the fun? This is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're right no you have to get into that mindset of yes even figuring out the train is fun um <laughs> and you know what sometimes it's the after it's the stories that you generate from the um not fun experiences when you're traveling i actually got i have so many but the funniest one is that i got stuck in a i got locked in a department store in rome <laughs> um at night and <laughs> did you have to stay the whole night uh, I, I might have, except that it happened to have been located very close to the central train station. And so there were people walking by that I, I'm inside the store, you know, pounding, going, help. <laughs> <laughs> so about an hour and a half later, um, uh, five police officers and four department store officials and like everybody came and finally rescued me. But yeah, it was it was pretty funny that is were you in the changing room like i need more i was right <laughs> i was in the changing room and then i heard the i you know i speak enough italian that i understood they were saying the, the store is closing and you know here in the u.s the store is closing means get your stuff together come to the the checkout stand etc cetera, etc cetera. and so i got my stuff together and came out and there was nobody there at the checkout area and so i walked to the next one and i walked upstairs and there was no one and all the doors were already chained shut and locked they were serious get out work they were like get out yeah <laughs> i love it italy is one of my favorite places the only place in the world that rings a bell to say go take a nap i'm like i love this country <laughs> Okay, so what's one question, Linda, you wish I would have asked you? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. What do you do for fun? <laughs> what do you do for fun? <laughs> um, that was a really dumb question. Well, I, I really like road trips. I just got back from a road trip. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to continue traveling, even though we can't travel. Um, I love dogs. How about that? Yes. That's what I love. No, I mean, you can ask me anything. I I love that. Anything about the business in particular, we need to know. Like, how do we play with you? How do we find you? You know, I know that on your site, you have an inside, expert travel insiders that you can send, get a free download. Is well, you can connect with me in a couple of different ways, uh, depending on when you're, uh, you know, when this is being released. The um, I, I do a boot camp that's for people that really want to understand how to establish this freedom and build an audience that will support that freedom. So that boot camp is one way to um, to get a, a, a greater taste of what I do in my one business. And then in uh, Adventurous Life, you can just go to adventurouslife.io and um, take take the trip with us. I Ask questions. That. Yeah. And then on social, how do we find you on social? I don't actually do a lot of social. It's one of the things that I know I'm, I'm a unicorn in that way. I, I, I use it a little bit for personal things, but I don't use it for business. And that's one of the things I teach in, in my um, freedom following formula program, which is how to, how to build that audience without using social media. That's not that you great. don't, not that I try to talk you out of it or anything. If you, yeah. if you like it, great. Um, but if you don't, and I know a lot of people that don't, you don't have to, you can, there are other ways. 
Well, in the show notes, we'll put on how to get a, get a hold of you. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your courageousness, you know, in showing us how to be courageous and adventurous together. So I appreciate you and I appreciate all that you do for us to help us have an amazing life. Thank you, Susie. And I appreciate you too. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Power Your Profits podcast. Let these building blocks from today's most successful industry leaders equip you with the necessary resources and tools to finally establish the highly profitable business of your dreams. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at https colon double slash poweryourprofitspodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now is your time to rise to the top of your game. So be sure to catch our next episode. Until next time.